missing. And we have this policy out of sight, out of mind. This sister was isolated. She was by herself. What does that remind you of? It reminds me of sin. When sin is in our lives, we are isolated. When sin is in our lives, we're deemed unclean. When sin is in our lives, we don't know what to do. We're by ourselves and we are afraid. This sister was weak. She had nothing left in her. She was losing all this blood. She was weak. Sin makes us weak. Yes, sir. I want to talk to somebody that can I preach to your church. Yes. Now, it, it went on to say that she went to many doctors. She went on to see all these doctors. And every time she went, nothing was better. It got worse. You see, when sin is in our lives, man can't help us. And when we go to man, they only make it worse. When sin is in our lives, we go through some struggles. And no matter what we think, and we gotta bring it to one person, and it's not man. Sin takes away from us, but as you said, she spent all this money. Oh yeah, sin takes your money too. Let me tell you about it, sin will take your money. Oh jeez, let me get inside. So she, she, she was struggling. She was by herself. She was by herself. She had no money. So it seemed to at this point. Physically, she was weak. Mentally, she was exhausted. Financially, she was broke. And spiritually, she was depleted. Have mercy. Sin will do it to us. Sin will make you weak. Sin will take your money. Sin will break your mind. And sin will break away from your Savior. But you see, there's some hope. There's some hope. Because something can run that next part of the verse that got me. It said, then she heard. What am I talking about? Then she heard of who? Jesus. And when she heard of Jesus, some hope came in her life. And, and, and I had to wonder to myself, how did she hear about Jesus? Because she wasn't with the church brethren, and they weren't visiting her. How did she hear about Jesus? I did some studying, and the book of Luke talks about how Jesus was going around some miraculous things. He was giving the sight to the blind. He, he was taking demonic spirits out of people's bodies. He was healing the sick. He was raising the dead. With that kind of power going on, you can't help but hear about him. So his fame grew, so she heard about Jesus. Now you see, the thing about it is, when hope is gone, when strength is gone, when family's gone, when friends are gone, when the church is gone, you lose some hope. But then you hear of this man called King Jesus. And when you hear about this man called King Jesus, you get some hope in your body. You get kind of excited about him. And you say to yourself, if he can heal the sick, if he can part the water, if he can give sight to the blind, if he can raise the dead, surely he can heal me of my sin. She got some hope. She got some hope in her life. And when she got that hope, I got excited. She said to herself, the only thing I gotta do, I gotta do one other thing. I gotta touch this man. And if I touch him, I will be made whole. Right. She got together. And, you know, and, 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 and she, 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 she sat down and I can imagine her waiting to morning light. And, and I, I want to share something with you. You know, they had a toothache. Really bad one. I was taking time and all, every kind of pills to find just get rid of this pain. Finally, I said to myself, I'm going to see the dentist. I sat in my bed one night. I looked at the clock. It's at 8 o'clock. And this night, it was different from any other night. Because I said to myself, tomorrow this time, I won't be in pain anymore. Tomorrow this time, I'll be sleeping in my bed. Tomorrow this time, pain will be a thing of the past for me. I can imagine this lady laying down in her bed, looking up at the stars and saying, tomorrow this time, I won't be feeling any pain. Tomorrow this time, I'll be free from my burden. Tomorrow this time, I can go to the sanctuary and sing songs of the Lord of the saints. Tomorrow this time, I'll be free. I 
can imagine her rejoicing at our back. Because I'm telling you, you have no more hope left. And you hear about King Jesus. You can't help but get some hope. And when you get that hope, you start making some plans. And she made her plan. She said to herself, once I'm healed, I'm going to walk around and tell about Jesus. Once I'm healed, I'm going to go back and do what I used to do. Once I'm healed, I'm going to find that church and sing my redemption song. Once I'm healed. Have mercy. What a good God we serve. Morning light came. I'm going to tell you something right now. We got to lose some struggles at night. We got to lose some pain at night. We got to cry sometime at night. We got we to hurt a little bit at night. But I want to tell you something about that cry. It's all right. Wipe those tears. Get rid of that depression. Feel that joy. Because when the morning light comes, help me, Jesus. When the morning light comes, you're going to feel some joy. So morning light came. And this sister picked up her bags. And she covered herself up. Now I want to tell you something about her. This, this disease was embarrassing. This disease would, would, would cause some, some, some issues of talking around. So I can imagine her putting covers over her head, trying to hide herself, trying to cover herself. But she want to be seen. She want to attract any attention. So she went through the crowds. She went through the crowds, and she's dodging. There goes Brother Jones, don't want him to see me, she dodged. There goes Sister Mary, don't want her to see me, she dodged. But even though she was doing all those things, even though she was doing all of those things, she knew where she was headed. She was headed for somebody. She was headed for a master called Jesus. And she started walking to Jesus. Now I'm getting excited here, because I think about her stepping to Jesus. I think about her moving. And every step she made, she felt a little bit better. And she felt a little bit better. And she felt a little bit better. And she kept walking to Jesus. And then it happened, church. Then it happened. Then she touched my Jesus. And the Bible says immediately. It didn't say four to six weeks. It didn't say six weeks. It didn't say take these pills and call me in the morning. It didn't tell you next weekend. It said immediately she was made whole. I want to talk to you about something called sin. When we're going through some sin, we got to do some embarrassment sometimes. When we deal with sin, we got to do some struggles sometimes. We got to deal with some headache, some pain. But I want to tell you, like this woman issue of blood, we got to keep on stepping. Don't worry about covering yourself up. It's all right. Because who you're heading to, he got all the life for you. And he can take care of your embarrassment. And no matter what the church said to you, you keep stepping to Jesus. No matter how they discourage you, you keep stepping to Jesus. No matter how much you feel depressed, you keep stepping to Jesus. No matter how much that bad kind is depleted, you keep on stepping to Jesus. Keep on moving forward to Jesus. Step forward to Jesus. But I'm telling you, something's going to happen pretty soon. You know, you got to keep on moving to Jesus. You may feel tired. You may feel weak. You may be mentally exhausted. You may be spiritually drained. But keep stepping to Jesus. But I'm telling you, what you're going to do is you're going to touch the master's hand. And immediately, when you touch his hand, that sin will run. Because sin is afraid of Jesus.